you learn what you fail. To be successful, you have to fail so many times. And you fail every single day. So you need to be humble and understand that the learning process is hard. And you learn from everyone. Hola, I'm Claudia Romo Edelman. And I'm Cynthia Kleinbaum-Milner. And this is a podcast, A La Latina. The playbook to succeed, being your authentic self. Today, Natalia de Graef, Vice President Automation, IBM Americas. And here are the three key takeaways of this podcast. Number one, she makes the case for why Latinas should consider studying engineering. She explains that it's a career that gives you a framework and methodology to think and operate. Number two, she talks about being prepared to pivot your career with the changing industries. She even gives us access to tools to upskill and revitalize your career. Number three, how tenacity has been her superpower and why she attributes it to growing up in Medellin in a time of turmoil. All of that and more here at Ala Latina. Stick around. Today, a very special guest and a friend of mine, Natalia de Grave. Natalia is the Vice President of Automation at IBM Americas. She's been with IBM for 20 years in different countries of Latin America. She studied production engineering, has a master's in marketing, and spends her time traveling the world. Natalia, is so incredibly fabulous to have you here. I'm so happy to be with you here. As you said, friends for many years, and we do a lot of things together, this is going to be a new one. Exactly. We want to start with you. Tell us a little bit more about you. What made you who you are and what you do today? What made me who I am today is family. That's what, that is my feeling, who I am. I was born in Medellin, Colombia, out of three sisters. I'm the oldest one. I study engineer. I wanted to be a doctor. And then I received a recommendation before I graduated and said, you're too good with numbers not that good, not giving opinions. I always have an opinion. And doctors at the beginning of the years don't have opinions. So you better consider another line of work. And that's when I made my decision. So I studied production engineer. It was a long career. It was almost six years. And when I finished, I said, I choose the wrong one. And I never practiced, to be honest. I tried it at the beginning, but I didn't like, like the area of expertise. And then a friend of my father invited me to work in Xerox. I started working in there. He said, you're going to be a salesperson. I said, you're kidding me. I never sell anything in my life before. I learned how to sell. I like it. And I started my career. So why it makes me what I am today, like I said, is my family, my support system, my son. You know my son, the center of my life. So a lot of learning through the years. And I, uh, I think that we have heard from a number of our guests that they studied one thing and they, they just pivoted and changed. Uh, what we haven't discussed is actually that piece of being the eldest of your, of your siblings and how much that affects you and so on. And I am absolutely not surprised you're the eldest. I'm the eldest as well of my family. And I think that that's when people say that you get attracted to the responsible role of your friends yes. and so on. So are you... Mostly the most responsible of your family, is that it? I believe in the family, everyone has like a role, like the financial role, kind of the leadership role is on me, but we complement each other. We have a nice family. So we are three sisters, the two of them are married, pretty good relationships with my brother-in-law. So we travel all the time together, do things together. So it's, it's really good. I sometimes wonder if we put a lot of weight on what we are going to study and then you end up not using what you studied. Can you trace things that you learned in college that you ended up not doing production engineering, but did you use anything that you learned in school? A lot, a lot. I believe engineering is a formation. Uh So when you have the engineering formation gives you opportunity to pivot in different areas. And by doing that, you have a methodology and a way of thinking. That planning, that development, that expertise that you start in the, in the university, then you complement mm-hmm. through the process in their career of the learning. So if you ask me what I like to do today, I transform business, I grow business, I develop people. Mm-hmm. How I get to that one? Through the expertise that I develop with the background that they, 
that the university gave me, that the formation of engineer gave me. I guess we're going to talk more about this probably in the episode, but why do you think there's engineering is not a, a career that invites women or it historically hasn't been the type of career that a lot of women choose? I believe we are improving a lot of in, that, in that one, okay? Yeah. And when I talk about future generations, newer generations in IBM, we focus a lot in how we develop minorities and in my case, Hispanics and women, how we can help them. And I believe companies, and especially IBM, is really open to develop that. How we try to adopt and embrace these new leaders and women and open them a new opportunities in the workforce. And why it hasn't been so attractive for women? Because I believe the image that we have from engineering in the past is that it's too tough. And in the past, women were like designed or pre-educated not to focus in things that are too tough. Or, or the soft piece of the heart. Yes. Okay, you do the soft, so, it's more feminine. Yes. But I believe we are pretty good in the engineering formation because like you said, right hand, left side, they complement really well each other. Mm -hmm. And if we put the expertise on the learning, everyone develops different things and different skills. Is there also um, something to be said about engineering historically being thought as something that you really just need the mathematical side of your brain? And in reality, you need both sides and you need also being to be, you, maybe you're a better engineer if you are empathetic, if you can put yourself in the shoes of someone else. But we've never told women like your characteristics as Latina or as woman are actually good for engineering or am I just making this up? Okay, so let's be honest. You need math mm -hmm. in engineering. Yeah. There's no going to be a good engineer if they don't are at least decent in math. Okay, you need the, the math capability. And I believe math gives you a lot of analysis that you need to be a most successful person or a better manager or a better coach. So that thing of the math is really good because it's going to allow you to do the analysis part. Now, what you said about, like I said, the right hand side is the ability to create empathy with the people, the ability to develop relationships, the ability to build communities, the ability to build ecosystem is really good as, as a complement. So the more skills you have, the better prepared, a better professional can, you can be. The better salesperson you are. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to. I want to go back because yeah. I know you, and uh, I know how incredible, capable you are, and uh, you know, like structured you are, and I admire you dramatically. So I do want to go back to the past, Medellin. Okay. Your family, the core beliefs, what you were taught. Everyone that I know over 40 years old in Medellin had some background of crisis, conflict, uncertainty that made everyone that I know really resilient, resourceful, and really optimistic as well. Because if you were able to navigate that Medellin at that time, probably you're not scared about anything. But I want to know more about your background as a Medelliner, as a Kerucha, how do you call yourself? Like the people from Medellin? Paisas. Paisas, as a Paisa. But also, what were the beliefs that your family installed on you? What were the core beliefs? Like they said, Natalie, you can do anything, or, you know, like, Natalie, you're responsible for everyone. What were those? And what of those are you passing on to your son? So I believe when you were born in Medellin and you live in Medellin, as you said, like 40 years ago, that we were surrounded by drugs and drug dealers and all the insecurity, you develop resilience. That's one of the things. Then you stick to the core values of the family. They become more important than any other thing in life, like being respectful, being honest, being someone that always overcome any obstacle, try to achieve. Those things are pretty important because they are, you grow with them. You couldn't succeed without them. One thing that I profoundly admire about the people in business, the owner of business of Medellin at that point is, we never gave up. They never gave up. Because I was young, I was just a student in high school. But they could just 
sold everything and left the country. No, they fight for the city, they fight for the industry to keep the industry open. And Medellin succeeded. And it's a beautiful, beautiful place. There's cycles in life, you know? Things that are nice today, maybe get down, then get better. You know this coming from Mexico. And you know that I love Mexico as my second home. So we learn a lot about this, but I, but I believe the foundations of my family was always is community, how we build the community, how we help the community, how we trust each other, how we challenge each other. I always said to my bosses, no one is gonna be having a higher bar than myself. I always put the higher bar on me. So those are the things that I say that keep me aware of the things every day, and you never can forget about it. And that's what has been very present in your career. Like your promotions have been remarkable and ta 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 just like it's like a almost like one of those games that is like ding 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 dong dong dong. Tell us more about your it career in people. IBM. Like when I have these conversations and I see interviews that I have 20 years ago, when I became a a, the fir a first line manager. The first thing that I learned is the success is based on the people that you have, how you manage people, how you really integrate with people, how you understand that are human beings in the position that you're working with. So if you ask me what is the key for success, is how you lead your teams, how we become the leaders that our teams deserve to have. So would you say that the ladder that we see, well, when, when we study your career, it, it looks like a ladder, like no, nobody else's resume looks like yours. We study resumes for these interviews, and it's usually like more like a monkey bar or like a wall where people take lateral moves. Yours looks very much like you were climbing. Every two, three years, you were promoted. Do you attribute to the way that you lead teams, why you succeeded and why you were then given a bigger scope, in, like a promotion? I believe, look, I always said this when they, they invite me to speak with people in IBM or outside of IBM. I believe I've been privileged in the company that I work with because IBM gives you two things in particular. We have access to develop all the skills that we want to develop. And we also have opportunities to challenge ourselves. So I always said, you always give me businesses that I need to transform and grow. But I believe I developed that expertise with IBM through the years. So you're gonna get in this company whatever you wanted to get. If you're decisive, if you work hard, you prepare yourself, and obviously do you deliver results. Yeah. But it's a combination. We, can, we have the best technology in the world. I'm sure of that one. We are a hybrid and AI company, hybrid cloud and AI company. And I'm sure that we have the best product in the market and in the industry, but also we have the best people selling those products and supporting those products and deploying those products and having technical expertise. So it's that combination. So if you guys have the best people, how did you manage to be the one that climbed the ladder? Because not everybody could get promoted. What was your superpower that made you like stand out in such a great company? I have a boss that, he, that said to me the other day, two years ago, I said, I'm a stubborn. And Rob said to, me, said to me, no, you're not a stubborn, you're tenacious. And that is my learning in English. I, I, I learn expressions every day being, Speaking Spanish, you learn expressions when you speak Portuguese, when you, when you speak English, you, you learn from the people. And I believe that is a good description. I'm tenacious. I don't give up. Yeah. She just flipped the script. Because maybe they think that Latinas are stubborn, and we are not stubborn, we are tenacious. Which, thank you for flipping the script before we ask you to flip the script. <laughs> okay, so it's that one. I believe I'm not designed to give up. I don't give up. If I truly believe that something is the right thing to do, I'm going to fight till the end. Okay, great. And what is the price of, like, I just want to understand for, because I do think that a lot of Latinas are very tenacious and are very hard work. Um, and I don't know the difference between hard work and tenacious. And I would like for our audiences to understand that it comes almost to greed. That 
drive that combined with passion makes you unstoppable. And that makes you to be sort of like the one that wins the Olympics and the ones that are like in, like in the military services, the ones that survive. So let's go deeper into tenacious and tenacity. And I understand, you know, like that, where could it come from? But what is the difference between tenacity and hard work? And I don't know if we are all hard workers in every way because the people have different priorities in life. And that's one thing that you learn through the life. You gotta be understandable of the priorities of people. They need to be different, otherwise we'll be robots. So when you said hard work, it's not only to do the hard work, you need to understand what is critical when you're leading a team. What are the critical things that you need to focus for your team so you're gonna be successful? And you set the path for the teams. And I love that because I do think that Latinas, particularly Latinas, are absolutely hard work. If there's one thing that unites us is our values and our desire to progress. Um, 90% of Latinos identify on that one thing, which is like we want more, we want better, we will work hard for that. But I think that the big differentiator and the learning would be to make sure that you have the clarity of where yes. do you need to hard work for, where do you need to work smart for, so that you can turn yourself into a more strategic, tenacious uh, leader. One thing for, for Hispanic in general, for Latinos that I have seen through the career is, and when you don't have English as, as your first language, we overcompensate talking more. Yeah, t- you can tell me. Yeah. That. I do it all the time. So, so you need to stop and listen more. And one is one thing that that I've been developing and learning, and I keep doing it now that I work for Americas. How you develop a more listening, pay attention, learning more, and then acting. And that is, that is a question we had for you. You were the same leader, you, in Latin America, uh, different countries. Now you moved to the Americas in the U.S. What changed? What cultural changes do you see? It's a huge one. All right, it's a, let's it's go. a different one. So when I came here in 2021, I came to run the ecosystem for Americas, to drive the transformation of ecosystem. Ecosystem is all the business that we do with companies that either resell our, our products, embed our products to create solution, or integrate our solutions in the things that they do. And when I came, the first challenge was not only to understand how the culture of America's work, because it's not only US, it's also Canada as well. And also how to work with people that sometimes when they see you, they said, why is she in this position? She's a person from Colombia. Which is already like, hmm. Yes, like it's a small country. I remember that many people used to say to me, do you miss Brazil? (laughs) And I said, Brazil, why? Aren't you from Brazil? No, no, I'm from Colombia. Because normally from LA, what is big? Brazil. So everyone believes that if you're coming here, you should be coming from Brazil. And that's the good thing. And I'm so grateful for IBM. For IBM, it doesn't matter where you're from. They will always support us if you're delivering the results and you get prepared and you, and you are committed to the company. So, so when I came here, it was a learning trying to learn the culture, trying to learn the business, trying to learn about the people. But I was so privileged. I developed a great relationship with the distributors in in Americas, with the partners. I have so many friends now that I change the position that they call me and we're gonna miss you and we're missing you. Uh, And tell us now that you're leading another brand. What, What do you want us to do? How we can help you? So it's a good experience. Okay, so but let's try to get spicy here. Okay. All right, so you move from Latin America. They tell you like, hey, how do you miss Brazil? Uh, but you're rocking it. You develop all these relationships. You come, you demonstrate results. Seriously, you didn't find any stereotyping. Seriously, you didn't have to dial down like your Latinidad to try to mold in into this new culture where it's not you're the majority. You Like this is truly a different setup where... Latinos do have these unconscious biases that are against us. I believe one thing that we always have to do when we go to another country is you have to dial down to understand. Like when I went to Mexico, 
I had to learn so many things that in Mexico were different from Colombia. And I live in Mexico almost seven years. So not everything was the same thing. Same in here. I came here, you dial down, you listen a little bit more, you learn about the culture without stopping being yourself. So everyone knows me within the team. I said to them, I'm crazy, but that's who I am. And they laugh at me. That I'm impulsive, I, I go in a different speed, I run, I don't walk, I run. So I push the teams. I, like I said to people, I hug, I kiss, I, we are, yes, we are close to people. That is not that normal. When I schedule one-on-one -on -one with people, people get prepared to present me something at the beginning of my positions, I always do that. I schedule time to talk to every member of my team. And they're quite ready to make a presentation. I just said, no, 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 this is to get to know each other. If you want to tell me something about your family, about what you like to do, about your career, tell me about yourself. And so many people within more than a hundred conversations that I have had through the years, they said, this is the first time that someone does this. It's different. That is the Latinidad that you said. It's something that is different, it's common for us but it's different. So you do it with respect because you're in a different culture. You are learning about that culture. And I always said to people, if you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to talk about this one. But that's who I am. Yeah, and I, I've seen the, the impact in performance that can have when your team feels like yes. you care about them. Yes, so. and I truly care. And that we have heard a lot of our guests that are leading as a mother or that care about their teams because we're so family oriented. I, and, and that probably is more, more stark in a tech environment, let alone in any company. But in a tech environment, I, I assume people are more binary in their conversations and in the, in the relationships. So when you add like to the, like let alone the corporate, but tech, then, then your Latina probably becomes even a bit more. And we have a different energy. I, I believe so, because that's the way who, that's the way we are. You told me the other day, karaoke, no, I cannot do karaoke. Remember that we were together and I was sitting there and I couldn't do it. But if you ask me to dance, I'll dance. And <laughs> I will put the whole room to dance. But I, that's who I am and I'm not gonna change that because that's who Natalia is. Yeah. Then you learn how you respectfully do who, you are who you are within the community that you're part of now. I learned, uh, I, I manage a team that's uh, in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia and in the US. And every Monday I send a message in our Slack channel saying what I did over the weekend and ask them, what did you do over the weekend? Send pictures just to get to know each other. Nobody from Malaysia ever said anything until I, I asked one-on-one, -on -one, why weren't they? And in some countries in Asia, you have to ask them to participate. They don't participate unless you tell them, hey, Gavin, what did you do this weekend? So now I tag people so they participate and everybody's participating. Culturally but it's different. The, the tips that you learn. Yeah. Let's talk about the tech and the industry and STEM and the, the, the piece. So. I want to know so many things about this, and I think that we have questions about you, about the industry, and about the future. I would love to know about what's happening with automation and in general. But so, first question: Why don't I see more Natalias in the tech industry at your level, more Latinas leading tech companies? I think you're seeing more and more. Like I said, I mentioned Anna. Anna is, is an great. example. It is. I believe it's, it's a personal decision. You need to decide what you'd want to do. Having a career, not only in a tech company, in a consulting company, in a manufacturing company, that is going to be a successful career, comes with sacrifices. And I believe during the pandemic, and this is a, an absolutely personal opinion, I see that so many people change priorities. Some people said, you know something, in this new environment, I want to do this. What we have been trying to do in the company is give people like the openness to follow their priorities and try to merge those with the priorities of the company, if we can do it. And I believe those new generations that we are seeing, and it's starting to see the change, but how are we going to have 
more Natalias, more Anas, more people, in, more Clios. I have another Hispanic, you know Clio as well. More Hispanic women in the industry is, I always said we want to be more in front of the schools, college and universities. Talking about this one. So NYU invited me the other day to the Ulava, the Hispanic community, to talk about the career and the experiences. We have that responsibility. We need to spread the word that the STEM community is open for everyone, not only women, for everyone, and we want to invite more people. We are doing something in IBM. We're putting and upskilling 30 million of people around the world in new technologies, free, open to everyone. We need to spread the word. So B Tech? No. Or another one? It is an evolution. Okay. Something oh. that we announced with Arvin about that. I, th I thought I just saw yeah, it in, yeah, yeah. in Davos. So, yeah. so it's. We are opening skills for everyone for free. So if you want to do it, it's open, it's for you, it's available. Where should our audience go look for it? IBM.com. Ah, I guess I, we know that. <laughs> I, 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 I wonder, and, and then we should move on. But many years ago, and you are right, there's more Natalias now than I think that even five years ago when we started yes. talking about that. Um, there is more role models. Um, I wonder whether there's the cultural shift and whether we have the encouragement. I remember how um, a, research, um, a research indicated that the reason why there's only 2% of Latinas in tech is number one, access to education, which you're providing and many other people are providing. But number two is no one told them. No one encouraged them. No one say like you, Gavin, now you speak. Uh, you know, little Natalia, now you do engineering, you can do it. Do you think that's still the case? And how do you put that in combination with the, our abuelitas not really dreaming of us being software engineers, like, like other cultures have that. But that, that cultural barrier with the non-encouragement, how does that play a role, if at all? I believe we have a responsibility, all of us, in that. So, like I said, going to universities, going to schools, high school is important. We do it around L.A. everywhere. So I was with the director of software in, in Mexico, Elida, and she is going to two of universities talking about data, artificial intelligence. And that's important is if you see someone talking about hybrid cloud, artificial intelligence, how artificial intelligence embedded in every action and every function that we do today is going to bring enormous power to all of us. And you see a woman talking about that, maybe you're going to be less afraid next time. Yeah. And I always said to my team, I said priorities this year, and I said the first one is skills. If you're not ready for the conversation, you're never going to start the conversation. Natalia, what advice can you give to Latinas who are considering a career in tech? Get prepared. Get prepared, get ready, and don't be afraid. And why should Latinas consider a career in tech? Because it's a really exciting opportunity. It is also something that is going to give you enormous like joy, recognition. You really can transform the world and the way that we work and the way that we do things. So you talk me about automation, the way that you simplify process, the way that you integrate processes, the way that you automate everything. It is something that we can be and create a meaningful impact. And also, you were talking about something before is, is well recognized and is well paid. So tell us about that. Like I learned that if you are an analyst, it is the most, uh, the best paid first job that you can have. Um, and I think that Latinos, we should know about that. Like when you're making your choices in high school, you know, all of us dream to buy a house to our abuelita. Well, a great way to do it is go engineering and go, go artificial I intelligence. Be, exactly. I believe if I can say anything in, regarding STEM is you got to be prepared in hybrid cloud and AI. So talk to us about that. What does that mean? Let's get a little class. Okay, so remember when the cloud came out? Yeah. So everyone was saying everything is going to go into the cloud. We said, Arvin, our CEO said, no, the world is going to be hybrid. 
there's no way that we were going to move all enterprises and everything, and we're going to redesign everything and create everything cloud native. We're going to have a hybrid model of operation. And what we have now, three years or four years later, is a hybrid model. So still, 70% of all the work that we do is on-premise. What I mean by on-premise is within the companies, within the confines of the companies, and 30% is on the cloud. But you have to integrate those worlds. You have to have an integration between what you have in the cloud, what you have on-premise, to make the work possible and the process of efficiencies. Today, companies are looking, when we were talking about 2020 on the pandemic and 2021, everyone was talking about customer experience. And everything that everyone was doing is how we improve customer experience. Artificial intelligence, all the assistance and the things that we create really help in experience and the customer experience and customer satisfaction. Today, the studies show that people and the industry is looking to have efficiencies because the economy is having those needs and companies. So having automation, having hybrid cloud, having AI is going to bring you the opportunity to show those efficiencies, to really target the spend that you don't need, the money that you're wasting in your companies that you can allow, don't allow yourself as a company, it doesn't matter if it's big or small or it's a Soho company, a medium company, you cannot have and be wasting money. So analyzing the processes, analyzing the efficiencies and getting more productive and more efficient, it is really important for all of us. So if you tie that, that need, and you start developing skills to tackle that, then you can have an impact and you can have a successful career. I mean, I'm very ignorant when it comes to uh, engineering, so I'm going to ask you two very basic questions. The first one is, like, if somebody is thinking about studying engineering, what type of engineering should they study? Which one is the engineering that is going to be, they're going to have a job forever? And the second part of my question is, where would you start your career? In a big company like IBM, in a startup that, like, the scope may be bigger, but you move faster? Like, how should somebody think about the early years of an engineering uh, and career? And the third to that is what are going to be like things that are going to be there for the next 20 years. Is artificial intelligence uh, like a, a, a stay or a flop like metaverse? And Okay, so I gave the explanation really simple, okay, without all the technical components or how we connect those or API or the integration process. But what type of engineering? So everyone will say to you, st study computer science. I will say to you, and this is like my very personal opinion, a study an engineer. But within that study, and I said this to my son, it's not enough with just having a career now. You gotta learn about more things. You gotta participate in more things. So complement that, of course, with something related, in my case, with artificial intelligence or hybrid cloud, but you have that opportunity. But if you're an economist and you don't know artificial intelligence, you're missing a big portion of your business. If you're a finance person and you don't understand artificial intelligence, you're missing a big opportunity to be more productive. So in anything that you do, try to do that. Yeah, we do that where I work. And is artificial intelligence here to stay? Yes. Is it gonna eat up a lot of jobs from our community? I believe it's gonna transform a lot of jobs. Saying that jobs are not going to disappear because of artificial intelligence is naive. It's like saying, so many companies disappear with all the streaming business. You don't go on a place and rent a movie anymore. You stream the movie. What companies does? So these disappear. A lot of jobs are being created because of the streaming business. And that's the recommendation you're giving to Latinas. Go to the jobs that will appear that are related exactly. to engineering. Exactly. Get prepared. Get, Get prepared. prepared. There was an ad in the highway in New York that said in big letters, AI took my job, and in small letters, to a whole new level. And I believe the big letters should be to a whole new level, because at the end, you are learning and developing a lot of new set of skills that are going to allow you to do so many different things. Yeah, totally. I love it. Any other message to our audience on the industry, STEM, cultural, 
advice, career, a message to young Latinas? Follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. High, high, high dreams is, and pursue them. If you have a dream today, and then another dream in two weeks, and then another dream in a month, you're not consistent. You sound very um, confident. What, where does your confidence come from? Because one of the things that I'm really trying to get our audience to know is that women like you who are so successful and seem to just have gotten everything they wanted also had moments of doubt or of uh, problems. Like, all the time. And how did you, where did you get your strength to come out? And you said you're very resilient. So where did you get that from? Because you learn what you fail. And, and to be successful, you have to fail so many times. So and you, you fail to... every single day. So you need to be humble and understand that the learning process is hard. And you have to learn every single day. And you learn from everyone different things. I want to talk to you now about identity. Our Latinas are every time more reclaiming their Latinidad, reclaiming language, reclaiming being proud to be Latinas. And we want to make sure that they do that by coming to work, being their authentic selves. You and I have spoken about like how important it is for companies, but also for Latinas to, to be themselves. To be themselves. But I believe that's what I said is, is everything is in the package. So when you get Natalia or you get Claudia or you get Cynthia, It's you in a package. It's come with everything. Now, understanding that now I'm working in a different environment, in a different culture, I have to be open to learn. Because I cannot pretend that I come here like I am, and I'm not going to adjust to be and learn and be more successful in a new position and a new country. So we have to be open to learn. So when you said a scale down, for me that a scale down is like to breathe, pause, learn, listen, take feedback, and then restart again. When you said, so are you successful is yes, but I, we fail and we learn from that one. And it's part of the Latinidad that you said, the, the way that we are now. When I said everything is coming in a package, I have peers of mine that said, you're like a hurricane. And I said, yes, it's coming within Natalia. It's everything included. And that's the passion that you put in the businesses and the passion that you put in the things that you transform. So that diversity of cultures that we have and that we build is what makes us successful. So in the teams that we have, And obviously I talk about the IBM experience because that's where I am, is we build that. We build diverse teams that have different ideas, different ways of seeing things, and also different ways of doing things. So you've never felt like somebody is not accepting you because you are a Latina woman? Because you're also working a, in an industry that I imagine many times you're like, one of the few women at the table. So you bring like double, the double whammy of the diversity in a table with maybe mostly men. So you've never felt like your Latinidad is, a, is something to hide. I have felt that I have been well accepted many times. Now I need to decide if I'm gonna let that take me down and pursue a different thing or I learn from it and keep going. My belief and my decision always is understand what is happening and keep going. But I just like on the hurricane, and I don't want to go there, but at the end of the day, I think that it is different. It When is. someone calls you a hurricane, it is different than just like the mild wind that everybody's probably used to, right? Or whatever it is. So it might have cost you to not be invited to the places where they make the decisions after work, where, you know, like not to be fully integrated if you're a hurricane. No, And he said it in a really positive way because he said, you got something done in three hours that no one else could ever get done. So I believe we need to take those opportunities to make a difference. And flip them. So in a way, it's almost like a hurricane 
could be something that is negative, but let's make it a positive and because he, yes. you get things done in half the time. Yes, and he said that because of the speed of a hurricane, he was doing that analogy. You got this done and no one believed it was going to be possible. I mean, it is known that in the U.S., the, the way that you build trust in a company is by delivering results. Yes. Unlike in Asia, maybe in Latin America, the way to gain trust is by building a personal relationship. And like you bring somebody to your house or you go actually to have drinks and that's what opens the trust of people. And I think you're doing both. You're building a personal relationship, but you are delivering results. Yes, and I will never, I, if anyone said to me, it's only doing delivering results and not building relationships and not developing trust with people, I will say you, you need a different person for the job because that's not me. Natalia, we created the Ala Latina Network and we had our first Ala Latina dinner a couple of days ago where we heard firsthand not only the experience of these trailblazers like you sharing it with the next generation, with the rising, about what would they do differently and how what advice would they give to themselves uh, if they would be 30 years ago. But we heard from one of the rising stars that she just started Incorporate America eight months ago. And because of the technique of flipping the script that she heard in the podcast, she was able to come to it and say like, oh, okay, so I have to flip the script. Now I understand that there's values that are hurricane, could be negative, but in reality it's a very positive one. And when you learn how to flip them, you, you start in a position of advantage. I'd love to start debunking with you some of those things that are true values of us uh, that could be debunked and trained to reframe so that Latinas get more power, but also corporations get to understand us in a better way and understand that those are positive attributes to a company. Is there anything in particular that you think of our values, the typical ones that we're associated with? I will say that there's so many things in that one. One is the commitment. We truly develop commitment. So it's not only that we said we're going to deploy this technology, but also we made personal investments and in making sure that the teams and the customer gets what they, what they really need. When your teams comes to you and said, we're not going to be able to do this because I have received five no's. And if you believe that makes sense, then you take the problem and you follow through until you get a solution for your teams. You show that you work in a different way, like pivoting something that is negative to something that is positive, leading by example. That's not different from a person in US or in Europe or Middle East. It is I believe one thing is the passion that we do it and the way that we do it is something that is normal. I was in a, in a conversation the other day and we were talking about priorities in the business. And I said it in a way that it was a strong, but, but someone said, if I said that in that way, I maybe was going to be thrown out of the room. You said it and everyone was like happy with you saying it. And I said, no. No, 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 I don't care about the Europe implementation. Let's talk about Americas. And then we start talking about Americas. And the, the reason of the meaning was the European one, but I needed the Americas one to be first. And, and my peer said, if I said that, I was going to be thrown up. And you got it in the agenda. I don't know, it's the natural way that we say things. Because we're natural, we are spontaneous. Respectfully, but it's spontaneous. So maybe the, the flipping the script is, we people may think of us as shameless, but we are actually straightforward? I'm pretty straightforward. Now I learn every day, like English is my second language and I didn't learn English when I was 12 or 13. I took English classes, but I learned la English really when I was 20 and I learned every single day. So I said to my team, I, in my broken English, I made many, many, many mistakes. And sometimes you see people that laugh at you because you pronounce it incorrectly and you can feel bad. And one of my bosses once, one day said when I came here, you never apologize again. You speak three languages and some of us barely speak one. So when you start learning that and, and letting people know that you're not ashamed of learning. I'm not a share of learning. I, I learn every day. 
And it's an excuse when you don't speak well the language to somehow, you know, like flow, go with the flow. My husband would say that that is the, uh, that is the formula for our happy marriage because he understands only two thirds of what I say anyways. <laughs> I get the Richard feedback. is right. <laughs> and also is the icebreaker. When you make a, a mistake, people is going to say to you, what is it? I'm so sorry, it's my broken English, so let's get back and teach me how to say it correctly. And the my message son, is totally different. Yeah, my son corrects me all the time, and I said, with love. If you don't correct me with love, you're going to be in problems. But you teach me, I'm yeah. going to learn. Now, uh, we have two more questions. Okay. If you could go back to your own 30-year-old self and tell her, give her some career advice, what would you tell yourself? The same thing. Follow your dreams. But you did. So something that maybe you, you wish somebody more senior with, this, with the perspective of you made it, you're at the top, you're confident, you're killing it, your English is great. What would you tell your 30-year-old self? Learn English before. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Learn English before. Learn technology before. Now, younger generations, don't be comfortable just having your career. Build up your resume. Build up your expertise. Get exposed to new technologies, to new people, to new cultures. Don't be afraid. Incredible. So, is there anyone that you think we should have in this podcast? Is there any woman Latina that you admire that you think that we should you have? You should have Anna. Anna we is should great. have Anna. Yes. Anna is great. Anna is an amazing, amazing person. And just to close, Natalia, what? I'm like, just like a summary of everything we just said in the, in the last couple of minutes. What would you say is your playbook? Then I, I don't have a playbook. No, just, you just gave us a, a pieces, pieces all together. Like, what would be? Be truly to yourself. Be prepared. And be open. So thank you for being open to sharing your story. Thank you for coming prepared. Thank you for being true. I wasn't prepared. I know, I know. I'm just like closing the podcast with some uh, love. Uh, with some love. With like some your love. son. Exactly. <laughs> so thank you for being super prepared <laughs> for being true to yourself and for sharing all your wisdom with our audience. Natalia, it was amazing having you in the podcast. Thank you for your wisdom and generosity. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure to be here. And with you, we're going to be able to lead and succeed. A la Latina! Latina.